Now, what direction will the thunderstorms move? In general, if you just take the average wind speed from around 4,000 feet up to about 18 or 20,000 feet, what's that average wind blowing toward the north, uh, east, or east, and the, uh, uh, the average direction, uh, add it up as it goes up. Now, you don't need to do all this because it's being done for you, but it's a good thing to know. They move generally with the upper wind flow. Tornadoes do turn right, they do turn left, they split, they do all kinds of weird things but in general, they'll move with that upper wind speed. Now, storms will occasionally, as I mentioned, move to the right of the average flow, and sometimes it happens rather quickly. Now, I have to tell you, movement within, inside a tornadic thunderstorm, supercell, wall cloud, big tornado, it can be very, very complex. Let's take a look at this. Here we have a huge, huge mesocyclone. The entire thunderstorm is rotating. Uh, this is a, a simulation of what the tornado in Canadian County on May 31st, 2013 would have looked like. Now this is not exact, this is our rendition of it, but you see the huge circulation. You see two large tornadoes, you see smaller tornadoes rotating around. Now the entire thing is a tornado, okay? It's 2.6 miles across. You have the big funnels in the middle, big tornadoes in the middle. Some of those were as large as two football fields end to end. And there were many of them. It was the most fascinating to me, the smaller ones rotating around in the storm and they will move towards you, these did, at 175 miles an hour towards you. That'd be like if you had a race car to go 175 miles an hour. That's how fast they move toward you. They only last about a second or so, but just imagine a temporary wind increase from maybe 100 to 175 or 200. Who knows what it might be? But those things wrapped around, moved at extreme speeds. This is a good rendition of what we call the monster supercell. This might be a little bit of a surprise to you. This is a tornado. Don't worry about how big it is. Let's say it's, that tornado is moving north. Rotation is moving north. The mesocyclone is moving north. The wall cloud is moving north. Tornado is moving north. Well, if you're up north there and this is coming directly towards you, let's say the wind around the tornado is rated as a one, 100 uh, miles per hour. It's moving north uh, at 50 miles per hour and has a wind speed in the tornado of 100. So you just add that. The wind speed in the tornado is 100 and it's moving at 50. So if you're on the east half side of that storm, you'll get hit with winds of 150. And correspondingly, on the west side, the wind coming at you from the north, it would be the 100 mile per hour minus the 50 mile per hour speed, and it'll give you winds of about 50. And it's fascinating when you evaluate the damage when a storm comes by like this. You know, when there's a tornado event, you'll sometimes hear someone in the field yell, it's an EF2, it's an EF4, it's an EF5. They don't really know because the EF scale is a damage scale. It is not a wind speed scale. They look at the damage, they evaluate the damage, and then they say what wind would cause this damage. So that's how you get the EF scale. Just remember, the EF scale, a damage scale. The Doppler is not really involved in it at the present time. However, we've had some tornadoes were rated uh, like an EF3 when the Doppler actually picked up winds of EF5. So there's challenges uh, coming up in the future with that, but it will all get worked out. Let's look at EF0. It's about 65 to 85 miles per hour. We get strong straight winds like that all the time. Uh, in fact, the strongest straight wind I've ever seen was down, I believe, in Louisiana at 150 miles per hour. But the EF0 with respect to a tornado, 65 to 85 miles per hour, very minor. You know, shingles come off, trees go down, that type of thing. Sounds bad. Then it goes on up, you know, EF2, let's say you had a tornado and they go in, they look at this and they say, well, oh, considerable damage. They look how the building is constructed. Then they look at that and they'll say, okay, winds of about 111 to 135 will do this kind of damage. So therefore it's an EF2. Then you get to an EF4, 166 to 200 miles per hour. Now those do a lot of damage. You know, they'll blow cars a long way and they'll take out good parts in very large buildings and small buildings. And uh, so winds of 166 to 200, we call it significant damage. With an EF5, greater than 200 miles per hour, the damage is massive, incredible, however you want to phrase it. And usually with the EF5, you know, all that's left is the foundation. There are no pipes, there are no walls, there are no stools, there's nothing. All right, let's check some Oklahoma tornado statistics. As you take a look at this uh, chart that's up there, let me tell you that most tornadoes in Oklahoma come from the southwest, the west, and the northwest, with southwest being the most frequent, but they have come from all directions, and you can see by this chart, they have come all times of the year. Now, when you get right down to it, 
The most frequent time is late March, April, May, and early June, but you know, we've had large tornadoes other times of the year. Now let's take a look and see how we stack up with respect to weak, strong, and violent tornadoes. The weak, 65 to 110, now that will tear things up and hurt you if you're outside. Approximately 74% of all tornadoes in Oklahoma are weak. Not on the ground very long, don't do too much, but we do have some that are strong, 111 to 165 miles per hour, and that's about 24, 25% of the tornadoes are like that. The only good thing about tornadoes like that and larger is that we know where they are, we know where they're going, and we know what they're gonna do when they get there. Violent tornadoes, only 1.8%. That's the ones that are 165 mile per hour, plus only 1.8% of the tornadoes. Something always of interest is, uh, you know, how many tornadoes we have when and what year and was the highest year and the lowest year. Well, we have it right here for you. The largest number of tornadoes in a year. 1999, we had 145. So once again, 1999 ranks number one at 145 tornadoes. And in our viewing area here in Oklahoma, we had about 60 on that particular one day, but it was 1999. Lowest number of tornadoes by year, lowest ever, 2014, only 16 tornadoes.